So we've got the Prodigy, the Galaxy S23 FE. So Samsung's actually launched this with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 in a couple of countries, but then in some countries, it has still used the Exynos chip. So what about performance issues, battery issues, heating? Actually, there are quite a few upgrades. So much so that they've now introduced ray tracing in their gaming and a 3.9 times larger vapor chamber for cooling. So things are looking promising, but first things first. Being an almost flagship product, it comes just with the phone, a Type-C cable, and an ejection pin. No case, no charger, kind of bring your own accessories model. Now first, let's talk about the design, and it does look quite flagship-like. See, you get very similar camera housing with individual camera islands as on the Galaxy S23, and this time, a glass back. In fact, S21 FE had a plastic back, so they've definitely upgraded the design on the FE this time. And mint has been a color of choice for many phones this season, and this phone has it too, along with a purple and a graphite. The aluminum sides are also in matte finish now, making them feel a little smoother, and they're no more a fingerprint magnet. And other than that, you get stereo speakers, you get IP68 water and dust resistance, and you get Gorilla Glass 5 protection. Now the phone does feel slightly heavier and broader than the S21 FE. It's probably because A, they've now used glass, which is heavier, and B, they've increased the vapor chamber by 3.9 times to ensure that your phone remains cool despite, you know, playing games for too long or using the camera for too long. And I do think that these were very significant upgrades that the S23 FE needed. Speaking of gaming, the S23 FE supports hardware accelerated ray tracing and variable rate shading. And for those of you who don't know what any of this means, essentially gaming is going to feel very realistic. It's almost like having a game engine in your phone that's taking care of every frame and making it look very lifelike. And although there aren't too many games in the market right now that support uh, ray tracing, but it's good to know that the S23 FE is kind of geared to support games like that in the future. But yeah, gaming overall feels super fluid. It's very smooth, games install quick, they load fast, and multiplayer stuff just works. The phone has sufficient 8 gigs of RAM and has a fast internal storage, so it all makes the S23 FE very fast. And despite gaming for about one and a half to two hours, the phone barely got warm, far from feeling unpleasant or too hot. So yeah, definitely the Exynos 2200 does feel better optimized and the cooling seems efficient. But frankly, with stereo speakers, ray tracing, and a very capable chip, gaming is expected to be fun. But what adds more to that experience is that display. So just like the flagship S23 series, this phone has an AMOLED display with an adaptive refresh rate, but it's adaptive between 60 and 120 hertz. The display, like most Samsung AMOLED displays, is very crisp and it's just popping with colors. The only downside, I believe, is that the bezels could have been smaller. More importantly, it features Vision Booster, which has featured in previous Samsung flagships and A-series phones, but now comes in the FE series too. So basically, it doesn't matter how sunny or bright it gets outdoors, uh, the display would still be nicely visible, uh, readability will not be impacted, and it's intelligent enough to calibrate the display in a way that colors don't look too washed out. So if you use your phone outdoors a lot, this is going to be kick-ass for that. And now, cameras. So the phone has a 50 megapixel primary camera with optical image stabilization, a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, and an 8 megapixel telephoto lens with up to 3x zoom. And here are some samples I shot during the daytime. And I have to say, very glad that Samsung has finally got its sharpening right. It's not aggressive, uh, leaves and trees don't look overly sharpened, but greens do still look greener than they are, which does add to the color pop that many people like. I'm also really happy to see that Samsung isn't aggressively making the skies blue anymore, keeping it very real and natural as it should be. Indoors, I felt the color accuracy was even better than outdoors, with very close to natural shots and balanced exposure. In case of portrait shots, as long as the shots are easy, the edge detection and the background blur felt perfect. However, in some tricky situations like these, uh, there was a hit or miss at times. Coming to ultra wide photos on the right, again, very glad that Samsung has improved the consistency between both the primary and the ultra wide in terms of colors and tones. The ultra wide shots look really nice to me and still have a tad bit better dynamic range than the primary lens. Then I tried on the 10 megapixel front facing camera and again, I have to say, I quite like the quality and the skin tones captured. Even with the sun shining bright at me, the camera was able to nicely balance out my skin tone, did not overexpose or burn it out, which I think is a really good thing. Even if you look at the portrait shots, the background blur and the edge detection looks quite good and natural. And the colors are also well maintained. I was quite surprised with the low light selfie. 
These selfies were taken at night in a restaurant with extremely low lighting. But just look at the way S23FE has processed the selfies, looks very clear and balanced. However, the FE does claim to perform very well in low light scenarios. So let's check that out. And looking at these pictures that I took almost at around 10 p.m. in the night, I'm literally blown away. These pictures have come out so lifelike in such high quality and absolutely no noise or grain. I mean, this is extremely impressive, especially for a phone in this price segment. And you'll be really hard pressed to find a phone in this segment that can perform this well in low light. Again, this restaurant had very dull lighting, but despite that, photos have come out very nice and not in a very unnatural way. And here are some pictures of me taken at around 10 p.m. in the night with a bit of ambient lighting, but that quality and details speak for itself. Now, what really amazed me is that the primary uh, camera is capable of shooting 8K videos at 24 FPS. And wait, the front camera is capable of shooting 4K videos at 60 FPS. Again, this is something that's typically reserved for flagship level phones only, but then to see it in the FE series, it's amazing. Also, here's a 4K video taken at around 10 in the night, which is very good for a phone at this price. Footage is not grainy, maintains decent color and brightness, and all of this is because of OIS combined with VDIS technology that S23 FE now comes with. Now, let's touch upon the software real quick. Firstly, it comes loaded with Android 13 and Samsung's One UI 5.1, but it surely will get One UI 6 very soon. And Samsung does guarantee four years of Android upgrades, so all the way up till Android 17 is something you'll get on the S23 FE, along with five years of security updates, which is fantastic. But guess what? It comes with all the Samsung goodies, software-wise, that you otherwise just expect to see in a flagship level phone, including things like the wireless Samsung DeX. I mean, to see a fan edition device support wireless DeX, it does tell you how close the FE now sits to the flagship level phones. But hey, there's all the other stuff as well. So there's link to Windows, wherein you can link your Windows PC and sync files, photos, and notifications. There's secure folder, where you can privately store your sensitive files, photos, videos, and even run apps securely. You get wireless power share as well, so you can charge other devices and wearables too. There's Samsung Wallet, which is like an all-in-one place to connect UPI accounts, digital wallets, and even store your credit cards, which can then be used to make payments. And you can also install GoodLock on this, through which you can unlock major customizations for your Galaxy phone. And finally, battery. So it's got a 4500 mAh battery and it supports 25 watt wired charging. Though honestly speaking, I do think that in this size, Samsung should have delivered a 5000 mAh battery, but I suppose there was a compromise to be made to ensure a cooler and lighter weight device. Now, in my daily use, I could squeeze out about 13 hours. So I disconnected at 8 a.m., went on till about 9 p.m. in the night with mixed use. So, you know, I had driving with navigation or maps uh, with GPS turned on, then a whole day of Instagram, Slack, WhatsApp, email, 30 minutes of gaming and some music from time to time, just a couple of calls, like a very normal use, I would say. So yeah, 13 hours, it's actually pretty standard, nothing too good or too bad, just about decent. All right, that's it guys about the S23 FE and I think it's a significant upgrade over the Galaxy S21 FE. And I'm pretty glad that Samsung has pushed the FE series this time even closer to the flagship S23 series without having that flagship price. And you know, with all the software perks of One UI, 4 plus 1 years of Android upgrades, fantastic gaming and a pretty capable camera set, it's pretty easy to recommend the S23 FE, especially if you're getting it at a price of under 50,000 rupees after all the discounts. So yeah, that's it guys about the S23 FE. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I'll definitely help you out. And if you guys did enjoy watching the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon and mark all really help the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next one.